And I want to talk to you about the lust of materialism and, and what the devil has done through this. Right? I want, to, I want you to see this. Because if you don't see it, uh, you, you wind up somewhere you, you ought not be. Now the word lust, when we hear that, we immediately think of sexual things. And then what you have to understand is that when you really dig under that word a little bit deeper, you find that it is a great desire of something. Almost an out of control desire for something, and what I'm finding in the in the body of Christ is that people are not concerned about God's glory or kingdom building. It's all about me. What can I get from this relationship? And that's not where, where we need to be. Do you hear me? Let's go to our first passage of scripture in Leviticus 17 and 11. But why well, well, don't lose your confidence, man? You had, to, you had to go by yourself for a little while. You can't lose your confidence. Amen. 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 Always know you got what it takes to make it. Amen. 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 And don't joke around with anyone concerning your musical ability. Amen. If they speak negative of it, just ignore them. Amen. Chinese people talk to Chinese people. Russian people talk to Russian people. Stupid people talk to stupid people. Right. So you cannot address it. Don't even joke about it. And I'm going a little bit further and tell you what the Spirit of the Lord says is you will never be as great than what you can hear when the keyboard is off. Oh, wow. That's good. Come on. Yes. Okay. Amen. Leviticus 17 and 11. There has been a strong desire in the earth for what I want. Most people come to God because they need something from God. They want something from God. My whole reason for coming is because I got a need. The whole reason I'm coming to church is because I got a need. I want something. I need something. I've been through something. I need God's help with something. But let me tell you something. There is a remnant. Somebody say remnant. 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 There is a remnant. Just a few. A small number that have come to God not because I need but because I'm called. Yes. Amen. I'm about to say something. I want you to get this. You can't worship God to get anything. Right. You worship God because of your relationship. Right. You understand that? Right. He's good whether I get anything or not. He's right. awesome whether I get anything right. or not. Right. And we have to get to the place that I'm not so lured by the world that I am, I am perverting my thanksgiving unto God. Amen. Praise to get something is perverted. Praise because of who he is and what he has done is what God is looking for. You can't praise God because you want something. Right. Now, I know, listen, a lot of what I'm going to say today, because even though I haven't brought up, we're going to talk about the blood, the power of the blood. But I know I've come out of church where they say, if you want something, praise him. If you want a house, praise him. Right. Dance, sing, shout, fall out, scream, holler, attack your neighbor. All of, none of that God is looking for. He just want to be good. Whether you get anything out of it or not. Amen. Fire is hot whether you wanted to cook your food or not. Right. Do you understand what I'm saying? So God is looking for a purified praise, not a, pe a praise with a contingency. Yes. You understand that? Amen. Try loving someone and, and they are not obligated to love you back. But I'm going to love you all the days of my life. Yes. Right. Right. Yes. See, sometimes, here's something, here's something I learned. Years ago, you don't you when you when you tell your kids what you do, you don't tell them what they do as if it's a burden, mm -hmm. because then they feel as if they are an obstacle, a problem. Yes. And but you yes. but you have to tell your kids so that they'll never be ungrateful. Yes, right. that's true. You understand that? You don't tell your kids what you do because you want to weigh weigh heavy on them. Right. Mm -hmm. All right, but you got to make sure that they never become ungrateful, because you know. The mere fact, this is just the truth. I don't ever remember telling my mom, thank you for dinner. Mm -hmm. And sometimes, you know, you think it's uncomfortable. Even if right now, you go home today, you tell your kids, say thank you for the meal. There, it's, a, it's, a, it's something in the air that, that no, you're supposed to do this. Yeah. And, and we come to church with the same mindset. Mm -hmm. And you have to understand that if God is going to be glorified, it's not that you're supposed to do anything. Right. You've already given me more than I deserve. Yeah. So therefore, what I'm giving you is not contingent upon anything, Amen. but that you you are rightfully owed this right. grace. Right. 
Listen to this. Thanksgiving starts with the blood of Jesus. Yeah. 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 That is, you know, for somebody to tell you I built a house and you got to see the shingles. Well, if you ain't got nothing but shingles, you ain't going to have much of a house. Right. Come on. Tell you, I got the best roof you ever want to see. I got, I got the best wood. I got this wood shipped in from Egypt. I got this. I got the shingles is made. Of, but but if that, all they got is a roof and shingles, they ain't got a home. And most people need to understand that if you really going to be thankful, you can't overlook God's greatest sacrifice. Amen. Now I'm about to say something and it's going to hit home. I hope you receive it right. Most people do not have an emotional connection in regards to the blood. Right. Your car, I'm going gonna, I'm gonna to tear this place up. A man, a woman, want our children healed? Well, though we have emotional connections, but when it comes to the blood, it's just a fact in my Christian walk. Yeah. Me being a child of God. Now you have to understand, without you being thankful of God's most precious gift, yeah. all other thank yous is perverted. Amen. Oh. Come on. Come on. You've got to understand the value of the blood. Amen. Because if you don't understand the value of the blood, you will value a Lexus over the blood. That's right. A house over the blood. Yeah. A good job over the blood. Yeah. That's why we get excited that our children will go off to college but not be excited if they're tired of it. Don't let that sink in a while. Amen. You don't let that sink in a while. Because I value what the world value and what the world is, is, is offering more than what God. Now you can cut it any kind of way you want. But but if you don't value a, a child of God's walk over what the world calls a success, yes. you got your child on the wrong road. Yes, I know you don't like what I'm saying. Because my child is in Harvard and your child is in the community college. And you just jealous. Well, listen, listen. You can call it what you want. Yes. But when you leave here, there's no amount of money that can secure their future like God. Yes. You know what I'm saying? Yes. Teaching your child how to worship is more important than teaching your child how to make money. Yes. Yes. I'm going to say something. You can take it any kind of way you want. You get your relationship right with God, you won't be late for work no more. Come on, Al. I didn't think he'd get that far. I thought y'all would be so fake in a little while. Take me to the, the New Living Translation, Leviticus 17 and 11. I want you to see something because the blood is so important. If we miss this, everything else now become more about my flesh than about the kingdom. Mm -hmm. Mm -hmm. Ah, for the life of the body is, is in its blood. I have given you the blood on the altar to purify you, making you right with the Lord. It is the blood given in exchange for life. That makes purification possible. Now, I want to show you something. You are not perfect at all. Right. right. Now, I know you got a list of sins you're working on, things you need to stay away from, people you need to stay away from. But the only way you can come before God is pure. And the only thing that makes you pure is the blood. Amen. Amen. But yet the blood means so little to you. Yes. So you mean to tell me all what I did today don't mean nothing? If I don't honor the blood, it means nothing? Because God don't want nobody. In it. Listen, I don't know. I get contact a lot from people um, you know, that think you know, that I'm the type that if, if you come to me the right way, I'm going to give you money. I don't know where they get that from. Somebody told them a lot. I talked to a young lady some years ago, and I asked her specifically, why, why did you approach me? What was it that made you contact me? Was it my height, low complexion, no hair? What was it? She said, it's your profile. She was clearly honest with me, because I mean, she had no reason to lie. She said, you have the profile that make women like me come after you. You seem to be married and happy. You have a family, you're a family-oriented man. She said, when I look at your profile and I see what you're about, you become my target. You become my target because now I can give you something, you give me something, and the relationship is good. I ain't never got to worry about you come knocking at my door. Talking about something, I thought you loved me and all that God. Let me tell you something. There is never a, a worse relationship you can be in 
When somebody don't want you, they just want what you can give them. Exactly. Right. My God. Mm -hmm. Joke in jail talking about he love you and can I use your address? Please. <laughs> I'm gonna leave that one. I didn't think he didn't cry. I didn't think he didn't cry. The joke talking about I love you, you mean the world to me, but at the same time they need something from you. Right. Mm -hmm. I must need you to just co-sign for me so I can get this. Right, right. See, when somebody see when somebody really loves you, it's not about what you can give me, but what's inside of me forcing me to give to you. Right, right, that's right. God so loved the world, he gave. Didn't ask for, didn't want to receive, he gave. You got to get to the point that I want a relationship with God, not because of what he can give me, but because of what I will do given them to give him. Everything you enjoy in life is because of the blood. But now all of a sudden it seems as if the things that we get from the world has dominated the position in our life, then the blood. God said, I gave you my most precious gift. Yeah. And yet you look at that as if it's nothing. It's just a fact in my Christian walk. But God said, I need you to have a spiritual connection about my sacrifice to get you back. Yeah. Don't you start jumping and shouting because I promised you something in the earth. Don't jump and shout up and everything about your life. Now, this is for babes. Babes always want. My grandson ain't got nothing on his mind, but when he wants something, he wants it. Mm -hmm. He ain't thinking about, okay, Papa, I'm going to get you that yacht. Okay, Papa, we're going to do it. He don't think about that. Listen, I'm hollering, and you better get me something. Right. The whole relationship is all about what he want, when he want it, how he want. That's all there is. When you're a babe in Christ, you're never concerned about the kingdom. You're always concerned about what you want. When you want it, yes. you obey. But yet you think you, you you got something that can change the world. Yes. Babes can't change the world. Amen. My grandson can't fly jets to fly over this country to protect this place. He can't do it. He don't have the ability. Right. He's all about receiving, receiving. Yes. Stop thinking you are generally God's army and you're all about what you can get. Even your emotions is tied based off your earthly possession. Amen. You have no joy unless I'm driving right. You Unless I'm living right. You have no joy unless I got money. God said I need you to not wager whether or not you're happy or sad on your earthly possession. Yes. You got to get happy because I'm the center of your joy. He's not the center of your joy when you get upset because somebody got more than me. See, that's the problem with a lot of people. You don't know how blessed you are because you're looking at other people. You can't look at what I got. You can't look at where I'm living. You can't do none of those things to determine whether or not God has been good to me. Some of y'all should have been dead and gone, sleeping in your brain. You have been through some stuff you don't even understand how you got out. If you think long enough, you break down emotionally. Because I don't know how I got what I got. I made it. That's why the old folk used to say, I don't know how I made it here. If it had not been for the Lord on my side. That's where we are today. It's not about what I can get, but God, what do you want from me? There's a reason you gave your blood. I want to honor that. Your life's got to be more about you honoring God because of his sacrifice to get you back. It's a sacrifice for you to prove your love. Now, I'm about to tell you something. You can take it any kind of way you want. I don't care who you hooked up with. If they don't ever get the opportunity to prove they love you, then you don't know what you got. Right. Even God say, don't believe it. God said, test me. Yes, yes. Yes. Test me. Make sure. See, y'all deep and over heels with people that haven't been tested. Right. Right. I'm about to say something. I said this to a young man, to a young lady. I even shared it with my wife about it. But when, when you in a relationship with somebody and, and they paying 70% of the bills, right? 80% of the bills. And you say, wow, man, I'm telling you, he really loved me. Well, he got to pay 100% without you. Right, right, right. I'm going somewhere with this. Mm -hmm. You understand? You call in love, and he said, man, I'm telling you, I saved 200. Here's a thousand dollars. Or I had to pay with 800 because she's paying two. Mm -hmm. She's taking the two and calling in love. I'm taking the two and calling the savings. Mm -hmm. See, uh -huh. listen to me. I want you to get this. I want you to get this. The love come in when you come home and say, they laid me off. Yeah. <laughs> and he responds, all right, well, we gonna, this is the, these are the adjustments we going to make, mm -hmm. and this is what we going to do, and this is how we going to survive. Right, right, come on. 
But when he look at you and say, well, what you gonna do now? You ain't got love, baby, I'll tell you that. <laughs> you can call it whatever you want. Tell something, look at his hands and his feet. And I'm telling you, you ain't got love, though. I'll tell you that. I believe that alone, y'all mad at me now. So everything I got in this world is because of the blood, because Jesus gave his life. Keep in mind, it was a great sacrifice because Jesus, even himself, didn't want to be separated from the Father. But when he looked at the Father's love for you, he said, not my will, but let your will be done. The lust of materialism has killed the power of the blood in your life. You want too much stuff. You want too many things. You don't want a real relationship with God. You want what you can get out of the relationship. When you hear somebody talk about how much they love somebody, love somebody, and you say, well, why do you love them so much? Honey, he bought me a car. He did this. She did that. She did it. But mm -mm -mm -mm. well, what, what, well, now, I'm sorry. What, what, what part of it? Was it a two-way street? See, let me tell you something. God has proven his love. Yes. I don't know what have you done. Yes. You say, well, I paid my tithe. That's not really love. Because there's a principle in tithe that the, the people in the world follow. And it works. It's a proven principle. Yes. Mm -hmm. Only poor people think it's a gimmick. Yes. Uh. Rich people know that this thing works. You got to give back. Yes. Listen, if you can't right now tell me what you're doing right now, what you have done to show God you love him, what have you sacrificed so that God can get glory out of your life? Well, you know, I, I sacrificed him. I, I don't, I'm, I'm going to leave that alone. Because you stop sinning. That has nothing to do with you proving your love. Right, right. But when you start changing so that you can make change, yes. when you start living so that you can make impact in the yes. kingdom of God. Yes. See, you done, you done stopped sinning because you thought it was linked to your poverty. Mm -hmm. Let me say, I'm going to have to leave you alone. You can't call me no more. Right. I can't send you no more pictures because my rent do. And, 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 but, but, but as soon as you see yourself getting a little better, yeah, you're going to take them pictures again. I didn't think we were getting that quiet. I didn't really think. Your lust for materialism is warring down the blood. Because if I ain't getting nothing out of it, it don't make sense for me to be dedicated to you, God. See, the power is in the blood. Everything you want in life got to come through the blood. That, that, that's not just talking about salvation. That's talking about everything I want in the earth. God, I need you to order my steps. You got to understand that he said, these things you got to understand. The Father knows you need Things. He knows you need help. Don't come to me about that. Seek ye first the kingdom of God and his righteousness, and all these other things will be added unto you. Go to Romans 5 and 9. Romans 5 and 9. I want you to get to the place that I value the blood. I value what God gave me. I value what Jesus did for me. Romans 5 and 9. Look, look what it says. I need you to get this. Somebody said, Thank God for the blood. Thank God for the blood. And since we have been made right in God's sight, in God's sight by the blood of Christ, without the blood, you nasty to God. You stink in his nostril. Your worship is ineffective without the blood. Your commitment to God is ineffective without the blood. So I got to get to the place that because of the blood, I have a right that I would not have. But because of the blood, I can sing to him now. I can bless him now. I can glorify him now. See, the blood loses its power when materialism becomes more important than your Christian walk. Yes. Mm -hmm. I'm telling you how to get rich, and you don't even know it, because you want me to talk about houses and cars. I'm here to tell you God made the earth for us to have dominion. Yes. See, y'all been trying to go through the back door, but there is no back door for you, baby. If you come any other way, you're a thief and a robber. You got to understand if I just do it God's way, I got to trust everything else will be all right. And since we have, and since we have been made right in God's sight by the blood of Christ, He will certainly save us from God's condemnation. The only reason you can keep sinning like you sinned and keep on going is because of the blood. Now, whoever have not sinned since you had the Holy Ghost, you may leave now. But we've all keep, come on now, we all keep fighting a fight because we love him. I, I want, I, come on now, I want, I, want, I want to be effective in the kingdom. I thought about to stop so I can get something, because when I get it, I'm going to go back. But if I change for his glory, the Bible said now, God looks at me as a child of his because of the blood. 
See, they said, what can wash away my sins? Nothing but the blood. It's not that the, the sins are not there. They're not seen. That's why you got to learn how to mind your own business when it comes to people and what they doing. Because God is looking at what you saying, but he don't see it. Oh, he know. God know. God know. Listen to me. When your sin is covered under the blood, the Bible said God don't see what you did. He see the price has been paid. See, I know y'all don't like this. I know you don't like this. When you start meddling in people's business and start running your mouth, you be, you be lying to God. Because God can't find evidence of what you say. Come on. Wow. That's why you got to mind your business. Oh, I, know, I know you're trying to act like that sound right. Then listen to me. That's because you want to meddle in folk business. The moment you pick up your phone, the moment you get comfortable running your mouth about somebody else's yes. business, yes. talk about their children, they man, they life. Yes. The moment you do that, God says, I wonder, is, is this true? He looks over and says, that's the blood. That's the blood. Mm. See, the only way you see past the blood is when you are be operating in, in a mindset that's pleasing to your flesh. Right. You want you just got to gossip. You just got to tell you something. You ever, I well, I'm talking about me because I like church. will come back. I remember sometimes I used to get information. I couldn't wait to tell it. Y'all y'all never had that. You just couldn't wait. You had somebody you had to tell it to. Well, let me tell you something. That 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 type of stuff you got to get rid of. Yeah. Right. Mind your business. If if God said I don't I, listen in God's sight. That there's nothing but the blood. That's why we not condemn. Y'all condemning people and sending people to hell. Yes. I told y'all it was young lady. I've been I've just really been dealing with this because it bothered me the attack I had to endure. And and let me tell you something. Some people think my earthly position need to put me above certain people. You don't have people that are be a judge and you a janitor. They just assume. Where you ought to be positioned. Do you hear what I'm saying? I'm telling you, listen to me. You can say what you want. But I've been talking to God. Like, how is it that someone can call me a sinner? That someone would say, I need to re give my life to Christ. Go seek financial or, or spiritual counsel. And I'm trying to analyze this thing. And God said, because when they saw me in your life, they can't perceive that somebody with no education could have more than this. With not only college, but a medical degree. Let me tell you something. If you don't understand how God worked by watching certain people God put in front of you. Yes. That's why I told my wife, I don't understand some people. Why they take certain roles when they can see God living and operating in somebody's life that's right in front of them. I know you're going to call me arrogant, but you can't ignore the hand of God on my life. Right. So why do you want to use that against yourself? Right. Trying to find another way that I'm going to be great and successful. I'm going to have more than you. It's not about having more than me. It's just about serving God and whatever he gives me, I'm going to be satisfied. I'm about to close on this. And, and, and since we have, have been made right in God's sight by the blood of Christ, he will certainly save us from condemnation. Condemnation meaning, listen to me, I'm, I'm not telling you go sin. I'm not telling you to stay in sin. But condemnation is simply saying, I'm going to mess up, but I'm going to have the opportunity to get right. The opportunity to get right is the thing that keeps me alive. When I'm, listen, I'm telling people I'm married, but the devil said this common law marriage is it, still the same. And God said, I never said nothing about if you sin long time, then it turned into right. I'm going to leave that alone. <laughs> so I got to understand that I got to be thankful for the blood because the blood allows me to grow. The blood allows my true thanks in God to be real. If Jesus did what he did to reconnect me to the Father, and we didn't, if he didn't do it, I would have nothing. Then nothing is more important than the blood Jesus shed on Calvary Cross. The blood gave me the eye-opening experience to what God wants me to be in the kingdom. See, y'all want the private jet so you can show off, but somebody else wants a private jet so they can minister. Oh my God. I don't know what God is doing in my life, but but God know I made a vow to him yes. that listen, Sunday mornings is his time. Yes. It's for me to be in his house, for me to live in his assignment. Yes. I tell you this now, I know you ain't gonna like what I'm saying, but I'm gonna tell you something. I believe in my heart, God is calling me to the one percent. If you don't know what that means, just leave it alone. God is calling me for that one percent. Come on now. And, and listen, I'll be there and I won't even know it. 
the moment you're willing to pay $1,500 not to miss church, you qualify for your own jet. I'm going to tell you. Like that. The moment you're willing to say, I don't care what's going on, I have never looked at the weather report and determined whether or not I'm going to be faithful. about the blood that when you get up under that blood it starts to marinate on your life that that listen I'm changing because I love him and not because I want this thing listen I'm not I'm not I'm not gonna stop this to get something because that's not love love is listen I'm gonna stop because I want more of you listen you ever met somebody that listen I'm talking about men now you ever met somebody they will they only will be the only one not just one of them that means I got to do some cutting. Come on now. I got to do some shit. You got to understand that God is saying, I want to be priority in your life. But there is no priority without you accepting the blood. Saying, God, thank you for the blood. Listen, the car, I don't even say thank you for it because it's irrelevant. I don't say thank you for the, the for the strings in the shoe. Come on now. I'm telling you, thank you, I can walk. Y'all ain't getting excited about the wrong thing. But God said today, look at my soul. Jesus, the body that was beaten 
for we take this from the natural to the spiritual in Jesus' name. Father God, we thank you for the blood, the blood of the shed on Calvary Cross. This is not a ticket to do wrong. 
there's a ticket for the devil to never separate you. You're not perfect. Jesus knew you would not be perfect. But he gave his blood that your relationship with the Father will always be intact. This is that blood that Jesus shed on Calvary Cross. Drink, drink your own.